Mr. Simon Mswingye. He's a land tenure specialist at the United Nations UN Habitat, supporting Ugandan land country operations. He is a valuer with a land management master's. He will talk on customary tenure and local forms of land certificates within the National Land Administration System, linked to natural resource certificates for access to wetlands. Okay, great. So um, as introduced, I'm Simon Peter, I'm with CJ. I work with the United Nations Human Settlements Program and the Global Land Tool Network here in Uganda. And I wanted this uh, afternoon to share with you uh, some perspectives from a community on uh, regarding a community-based approach for sustainable wetland management uh, using a case study of Butaleja here in Uganda. So um, for my presentation, I will share uh, some insights on the context of land governance in Uganda. I will also um, share some perspectives of what GLTN and Land at Scale Project is doing to address uh, some of the challenges that I will highlight. And then I will also share some perspectives about the Global Land Tool Network. Um, and then I will also uh, present um, the climate uh, resilient uh, land governance and what it means um, in, 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 in the case that I'm going to present for the wetland management. And then I will present the Butaleja case, which is uh, showcasing uh, wise use of wetland using a community-based approach. And then I will conclude. So um, to start off um, my presentation, allow me share some uh, perspectives on some of the key, what we consider as the key land governance challenges in Uganda. Uh, so Uganda has uh, a complex land tenure system um, characterized by uh, four uh, recognized tenure systems and um, and and majority of Ugandans, 80% uh, of them access land through customary land tenure systems, which are largely unregistered. Um, the, the rights um, under customary land tenure system not only vary from one region to another, uh, but they are also complex. Um, uh, they are complex in nature and um, uh, also the claims and um, the records are not easy to um, uh, to record and formalize. Uh, we also have limited cadastral uh, coverage. Uh, so less than 20% of Uganda is covered by uh, land registration and uh, land information, uh, formal land information system. So, um, the other issue that is really critical um, here uh, when we talk about land governance uh, is with uh, the, the gender equitable uh, land, governance, land governance concerns. Um, although women contribute uh, over 70% to the agriculture workforce, uh, only 3% of uh, land is registered in the names of women and girls. And this is mainly uh, because of the uh, cultural uh, and social uh, norms and practices that uh, marginalize women and girls when it comes to uh, land rights. The, the, the other um, issue here is really the uh, rapid urbanization, which is putting pressure uh, on land and natural resources. So Uganda is still largely rural, uh, over 75% of uh, the land area is covered by rural areas, but it is also one of the fastest urbanizing uh, countries in Africa. And so there is um, a slum prolification in um, the major city, but also in uh, the regional or secondary cities in Uganda. And, and so this is exacerbating uh, pressure uh, on land and natural resources such as wetlands. There are also a high number of land uh, evictions and disputes. Um, not a day goes by 
uh, without um, a high profile case of uh, land grabbing, um, sometimes involving influential and powerful um, uh, people. Uh, and sometimes some of these cases of land grabbing affect thousands and thousands of people. Um, so this is also um, exerting a lot of uh, pressure uh, on the customary land tenure systems. Um, in addition and relatedly, we have also weak land institutions uh, although Uganda uh, has made significant progress uh, in terms of uh, the policy and the regulatory uh, framework and uh, reforms, uh, there has been slow implementation. And this is uh, mainly because of the weak land administration and land management institutions. In, in terms of the wetlands, um, um, most uh, wetlands are really very important. Uh, they cover a significant area in Uganda. Um, uh, they also are underpin rural livelihoods, uh, especially agriculture. Um, however, um, what we see in the last few decades is that the rate of degradation is really very high. And, and so it is estimated that if this continues in the next few years, Uganda will have no wetlands. Now, um, in this context, uh, GLTN and Land at Scale project um, is looking at contributing to development of uh, a, structure, a structured and scalable approach towards improving uh, tenure security and sustainable land use for men, women, youth on customary land in a participatory way. So the project has three major key areas of intervention. One it is looking at um, improving land tenure security for men, women, and youth. Um, yeah, mainly it's uh, looking at the customary land. And tenure system, which I say, as I said before, um, uh, land. And then uh, the second key intervention is inclusive, climate smart, and sustainable uh, land use planning. And then the third one is improved uh, capacity and awareness of key land stakeholders on customer land uh, registration and land use planning. This specific project uh, covers four regions uh, in Uganda. Uh, that is the Choga Plains, which is in the east of Uganda, uh, together with Elgon region, and then the Chigezi region, which is in the southwest of the country, and the West Nile, which is in the northwest. Now, um, the basic premise of this uh, intervention um, is um, the application um, and customization of poor gender responsive and fit for purpose uh, land tools and that and customized uh, to different context, and then used um, to implement existing policy and legal framework. Um, Simon Peter, you're breaking up. So the GLTN with over 85 partners who are several land tools, um, which Sorry, can you hear me now better? Um, yes, keep going. Now we can hear you. Yes, uh, Simon Peter, just so you know, I've turned your video off to help the quality of the audio and the, I hope that helps. Thanks, I hope it helps too. Can you hear me now? Perfectly. Great. So um, GLTN was formed in 2006 um, um, uh, to to develop uh, and it brings uh, together over 85 partners, um, mainly uh, working uh, to develop and influence uh, global uh, normative work uh, uh, around land governance. Uh, they are developing proper and gender sensitive um, and fit for purpose uh, land tools, which uh, can be applied in different uh, member state countries um, like Uganda um, uh, to implement existing uh, land policies and land laws. And GLTN was formed out of recognition that the land governance challenges 
are known, um, but there is limited uh, understanding and uh, tools on how uh, different land policies and land governance challenges can be uh, dealt with. Uh, so the, the network has developed um, uh, a toolbox, um, has developed several tools, um, ranging from tools for land administration, tools for um, ma managing land information, um, uh, tools for land use planning, um, uh, and several other areas including gender mainstreaming, um, uh, you know, in, engaging young people in land governance and, and others. And, and, and so these tools are available. Um, and, and what the, the network does, um, and this is also the case in Uganda, it develops capacity of uh, national governments and local governments, as well as other non-state actors, uh, to be able to use these tools uh, to implement um, uh, land policies and uh, land laws, uh, as well as deal with uh, the different land governance challenges. Um, I wanted also to share with you some perspectives on um, customary land tenure. Um, and as I said, this is important because that's the context in which we work in. Um, as as you you know, it has been argued that customary land tenure in Africa is uh, the main recipe for underdevelopment, and it is a major cause of the region's untold levels of rural poverty. But um, we we also know that efforts to individualize um, the tenure system um, in the past have failed. Uh, they have done more harm than good. And, and, and so there is um, increased um, recognition that um, the institutional frameworks um, um, within the customary land tenure um, are resilient and um, if supported, um, they can be a strong basis um, for social, culture and geospatial uh, identity. Um, also, um, the emerging social and economic uh, pressures on land, the, the flexible negotiation rules, the characteristics of customary tenure systems. Um, uh, uh, nowadays, uh, especially in the context that I described before, where there is all this pressure, uh, can easily be manipulated by individuals who are seeking power and control over land. And, and therefore, um, it is important that we look at um, uh, with, with the understanding also uh, that it varies, as I mentioned in the case of Uganda, for instance, uh, it varies from one region to another. Um, and, and so with that understanding, it is important uh, that um, we, we, you know, we, we, we try to support uh, the tenure systems um, um, and deal with uh, the different challenges there are in, but also um, the, the system should be allowed to evolve and, and, and accommodate uh, social culture and um, the, 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 the economic conditions, um, um, the current economic conditions. So in terms of um, the nexus um, between uh, land governance and climate resilience, which we are working in, in in the case that I'm going to present uh, for the wetland, this uh, graphic uh, really reflects our conceptual framework, um, the understanding that uh, land tenure system or secure land rights are very critical for um, climate uh, change adaptation and <laughs> So, I mean, Peter, are you and for, there? Um, for, for, um, as well as um, effective tool for uh, ensuring disaster risk reduction. Hello, have you lost me again? Can you hear me? We lost you momentarily, but you're back loud and clear. Oh, thank you. I'm glad I'm back. So I don't know how much you lost, but I was just um, really explaining that uh, this graphic that you see is our 
um, conceptual framework for the interventions that we are implementing in Butaleja and other parts of Uganda, the four regions that I talked about before. Um, and and I was um, I was highlighting the importance of uh, land use planning um, as an effective tool for ensuring uh, disaster risk uh, reduction. So um, allow me now uh, um, describe in, in more detail the case of Butaleja. Uh, Butaleja is um, a district in the Choga Plains. Uh, it's located in the eastern part of the country. Um, Butaleja is covered 40% um, uh, by wetlands. Uh, so what this means is that really communities um, uh, rely on the wetlands for their uh, survival. Um, as you can see, it's a significant um, coverage of the district and so are other districts in the region, such as Zimbali and others. Um, and, and then about uh, seven, more than 70% of Butaleja um, uh, smallholder farmers rely on the wetlands for agriculture. Um, they are mainly engaged in growing uh, uh, lowland rice, um, uh, and 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 other food crops. So um, uh, wetlands in Butaleja have been facing degradation, uh, mainly due to their conversion um, into rice production, and and this is leading to long-term environmental impacts. So the main uh, project objective is to promote sustainable climate, uh, smart, inclusive use of the wetland resources, uh, using the community-led approach. Um, um, and, and, and also using the Propua land tools, uh, such as the social tenure domain model, um, tenure responsive land use planning and others, as well as applying the alternative dispute resolution to be able to deal and, uh, with the land conflicts in the districts. Um, and, and so the interaction uh, between the community and, and, and the wetland um, the wetland uh, raises a, a lot of challenges, um, mainly uh, resulting into land disputes uh, between different communities, different individuals, but also community and the authorities um, who are also trying to uh, prevent the degradation. And, and so um, what we see there uh, really is um, the encroachment and um, illegal wetland use. Uh, we see uh, poor agricultural uh, use practices, um, as well as um, disputes are very high. Um, mainly the, the, the farmers also access uh, the wetlands through informal land rental arrangements. And, and there are also many boundary disputes. Now, um, also, also um, what you see and when you talk to people, what they tell you is that um, they, they already uh, feel the impacts of climate change. And, um, and, 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 and as you know, um, Africa in general um, and Uganda uh, contribute less in terms of, um, uh, in terms of uh, emissions, but um, the, the, the impact of climate change um, we are uh, so what we see more in Butaleja is that there are extreme conditions um, um, characterized by flooding when it rains uh, but also long droughts uh, so the weather conditions are changing uh, you also see destructions of biodiversity and then the wetland exploitation and degradation and and the impact of this is really um, evictions so um, some of the communities are being evicted from their land and from uh, the use of the wetland, um, but also um, uh, there is um, uh, low agricultural productivity, despite them, uh, some of them expanding their farms uh, to encroach on larger parts of the wetland, as well as uh, the loss and unsustainable uh, livelihoods and food insecurity. So this uh, loop cargo diagram uh, shows the relationship uh, between 
um, uh, different um, land tenure, land governance, uh, and environmental variables. Um, and, and, and really what I wanted to say here is that um, it, it's really a complex um, relationship as reflected here. Um, so, so what you can see, you know, different land governance, land tenure, um, um, you know, uh, situations and how they impact, um, how they impact on on the on the biodiversity and and the ecosystem uh, in the wetland, and 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 some of the actions that are being uh, taken or the interventions and how uh, those help to improve um, uh, both land tenure situation. Um, and 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 the um, and 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 the biodiversity and and conservation of the wetland, and and so uh, really um, there is a very clear connection between uh, land tenure, uh, land governance, and and um, um, a natural resource conservation uh, or uh, wise use of natural resources. So this. Um, shows the process which we are supporting the communities um, to go through in order to be able to um, uh, to develop uh, wetland wetland use resource um, um, to acquire wetland resource use permits uh, but also to develop uh, wetland uh, wetland um, management plans as well as um, uh, we support the communities to be able to um, to incorporate themselves into uh, communal wetland associations, which are really a community structure, but um, it plays a, a key role, um, um, uh, to, you know, to link the the community to uh, the local authorities, um, as well as um, uh, to organize the community and for them to receive the formal recognition from uh, the uh, the local government uh, and the authorities. Now, um, uh, Simon briefly, Peter? also let Simon, me. Simon Peter. Simon Peter. Yes, please. Yes, Clarissa. Um, we kind of the time is running. Do you think you could summarize? Yes, I will do that in the next two minutes, if that's okay. Yes, that's great. Thank you. Okay, so um, one of the things we see from this experience is that. Um, uh, recognizing uh, wetland user uh, rights through mapping is key to successful community-based wetland management. So when communities have clear user rights, that results into sustainable use and natural protection of resources. The second um, uh, point here, or um, what we uh, see as uh, from this case of Butaleja is the participation of the wetland um, users in the wetland management planning processes. Uh, it ensures that uh, people are directly impacted by wetland changes. They have a say in how uh, they are managed and decisions are more relevant, accepted and implemented. Um, and therefore this uh, improves re resilience against uh, climate impacts. And then um, I also wanted to highlight that uh, community-based wetland uh, uh, governance structures such as the wetland management committees facilitate knowledge dissemination between the sustainable wetland uh, management and climate resilience. Uh, uh, and lastly, the uh, project's land governance interventions, uh, the mapping of wetland user rights, the alternative dispute resolution, the, the wetland management planning ensures wetlands uh, ensures that wetlands are used sustainably, contributing to longer term uh, climate resilience and and really the game changer here is the propua and the fit for purpose uh, land tools and the capacity building um, that we are doing for both the communities for the local government uh, and also for the um, for, for the civil society organizations that are supporting the communities so so um um, that are continuing despite um, these efforts. Um, one of them is really that uh, local 
co-governance, which is really critical for scaling up these interventions. They have limited uh, capacity and uh, resources. So the natural resource um, and environment departments uh, in the districts, they have limited um, uh, staff, they have limited tools and funding uh, to carry out work in the community. And yet we see this really as important uh, for sustainability of the interventions. The second thing is really that um, there is um, some political interference. Uh, for instance, the president has recently issued an order to limit the issuance of the wetland uh, use resource permits. There are efforts to engage um, the, the, the president um, to, um, you know, uh, uh, um, to, to lift uh, this um this order um but this is still uh ongoing and somehow also it is affecting these um activities and the last one is that um the changing um discriminatory cultural belief um Um, uh, that, you know, and getting the benefits, um, it takes time uh, and requires also patient funding, which um, in our experience is really rare to come by. Uh, most of the funding is limited by time. And within the time of projects, it's always very difficult uh, to be able to cause the change, the social and, um, uh, and cultural uh, engineering that is needed to be able to influence uh, uh, the, cult the culture and social norms that have, uh, prevent women from enjoying um, their full rights. Um, as I conclude, um, uh, let me take one minute to conclude, Clarissa, if I may. Um, yes, no, please just wind up now. Thank you. Thank you. So um, this case of Butaleja that I just presented um, involving um, the community in planning, um, uh, management and conserving the wetlands, um, the, the primary goal is really to ensure that uh, wetland resources are managed uh, sustainably. And, 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 and what we aim really to achieve is the balance between economic development, social equity, and environmental protection. Um, also, collaborative interdisciplinary approaches that involve local communities, uh, government agencies, NGOs, professionals such as surveyors and planners and other stakeholders um, is really important um, in, in, in the success of this intervention and for sustainable wetland management. Um, lastly, um, this experience demonstrates that adopting innovative, proper, uh, gender sensitive and scalable land tools and approaches promotes land and natural resource management systems that prioritize the needs of the people and their relationship to land. Thank you very much for listening and thank you, uh, Clarissa, for the additional time.